Hey guys, hope you're having a great day. Um, I am finally back in my closet. Man, it feels so good in here. Um, I am finally back, y'all. Um, yesterday's video, I was actually in a hotel in San Francisco, um, but I'm officially back. I love it. Um, so today we're gonna be going over Matthew 5. Actually, um, sorry, uh, Matthew 6, 19. And uh, this is about laying up your treasures in heaven and not uh, dwelling on the earthly things, but going and um, saving up your riches and heavenly things. Um, do not lay, and this is what it says. I'm gonna start, sorry. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm very anxious to get going. Um, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost right now. Um, so this is Matthew six nineteen. If you all wanna go read this with me. Um, it's not very long, but I did write um, a lot of things over this and things that I wanna talk about. Um, so we'll get started. Um, this is what it says. Matthew 19 says this. Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, this is where your heart will be as well. Um, and so... Immediately, the first thing that I thought of when I was reading that is this, there's a verse, I'm not sure um, specifically where, but it talks about how um, a thief comes in to steal, kill, and destroy. And so this is the devil. The devil ha is coming to steal everything from you. But if you lay up your treasures in heaven, you, the devil cannot steal your treasures in heaven because he got, um, he got, I mean, it's Jesus says, and I saw Satan fall like lightning. So the devil cannot steal what is in heaven because he can't go into heaven anymore. It says that Michael and his angels fought the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor is their place found in heaven any longer. So it's important for us to save up on stuff um, that the devil cannot take from us. Um, and this is what I wrote down. So I'm going to start reading. Um, Our treasures on earth will stay here and they cannot go with us to heaven. These things will pass away. Not, they might pass away. Not, like, mm, eh, maybe. Like, in Pharaoh, like, um, y'all know this. Um, Egyptian um, gods are pharaohs and stuff like that. They used to bury themselves with their treasure. But do you know what? All those pharaohs in hell and their belongings are still on earth. Our stuff does not go with us. Our stuff does not go with us. It stays here. Rust settles and begins to grow. Um, and rust primarily grows on metals and it combines with water. So our cars will rust and eventually our cars will be burned. Our cars will be destroyed, but destroyed by rust and destroyed by fire. See, the first flood was by water, but the second one will be by fire. Um, many will be burned. Um, money will be burned. So many, <laughs> although that's not wrong. Money will be burned, and this world is going to pass away when the new earth comes. And um, after the tribulation, but that's a whole different subject. Moths eat specific things. They like to eat ex what your clothes are made out of. So all your belongings, your cars, your clothes, everything will be destroyed. Everything metal and everything that is of a cloth material. Your belongings will be destroyed, and everything that doesn't, um, everything that will apply to that will be eventually stolen or used by someone else or given to somebody else. And this is what James 5, 1 through 3 says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming to you. And this is talking about hell. Because it says that um, it is easier for a camel to enter the eye of a needle than a rich man to go into heaven. So he's, he's telling, he's basically warning them to weep and howl for the miseries that are coming to you. Your riches are corrupted. And your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver are corroded. And the corrosion will be the fruit, um, um, will be against you and will eat your flesh like fire. So because you have indulged the, the pleasures of life, so now, uh, so now the things you would so love in this world are rusting and your flesh is burning in the fire because you indulged in the fleshly things and not the spiritual things. So eventually the things that you love are gonna kill you. They're gonna burn like fire, just like you, if you do this. First Timothy 6, 21 says, um, command these who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, 
nor to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God. Trust in the living God, who gives us richly of all things to enjoy. Let them do good, that the um, that they be rich in doing good, in doing good works, ready to give, willing to share, storing up for themselves a good foundation for the time to come. They, they may lay hold of eternal life. So he's telling us to be good and he's telling us to be rich in good works for the Lord. He's telling us to be rich in terms of our spiritual life and in God. It is, it is important us, for us to share the things, share the blessing that, that God gives us, not store them up. Because none of this, like, I, I, I don't need, I don't, I'm going to say this so many times during this lesson, but all of these things are going to burn. So it says that giving is better than receiving. And this is what God has called us to do. Share the blessing that God has given us. Store up riches and good works. Do not place your trust in investments in unsure things, but put your money into the greatest investment. Who is the only certain thing in this world and the only thing that won't pass away. You see, even the devil will pass away when he goes into his permanent resting place. Christ is the greatest investment because he's the only investment that won't let you down and doesn't pass away. But Paul says and commands us not to be rich in natural things, but in heavenly things. Good works for the kingdom so that you may have eternal life and, and riches in heaven. So this is what it says in Matthew thirteen forty four. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sees all that he has and lays um, and buys that field. So he, this guy sold everything for this treasure that he found in this field. Christ is that hidden treasure. It's hidden. It's a mystery. That's why Paul describes it as the mystery of faith. You can't find buried treasure unless you are looking for it. Unless you have a map or someone has given you a map or a location or a certain idea where to find this treasure. But when you find it, you immediately sell everything you have and buy it. For you have had... Um, what you had was lost, um, but what you lost, everything was for gain. Paul says this exact same thing in Philippians 3, 7. So everything that you lost will be gained in Christ. For Christ is the greatest treasure. It's the hidden treasure. That's why I sold everything. That's why I sold everything I had to get what Christ had. I made the best investment. It's the only investment that never passes away. The stock market never goes down. It always rises. Imagine that. All you stock market freaks. Never goes down. This is what Paul says in Philippians 3, 7. But what things were gained to me, these things that I have counted lost for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. So he lost everything so he could gain Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. So Paul, when he found this real treasure, see, Paul was persecuting tr Christians. So he lost that reputation he got from the Pharisees, from men, and he gave it up for Christ. So Paul, when he found this real treasure, sold all of his things. And he valued all his things as garbage and threw them so he may, and threw them out. He got rid of them so that he may be found in Christ and seen as righteous by the Lord through faith. For no one can enter the, by the righteousness of the law because no one is righteous, not one. This is a difficult decision we must all make as Christians. And I've had to make, I had to make the same decision as well. And it's not easy. And for the first few months, it was probably the hardest time in my life. But do you know what? Like, look at, look what Christ is doing in my life. It's hard. It's, it, you have to go through a lot of suffering. But in that, Christ makes you stronger. But we're, we're afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Because Christ is our strength. To pick up our cross and follow him, we have to do these things. Count our, count our lives as rubbish, but Christ is gain. 
So we gain, we lose everything in our life, but we gain Christ, which is everything. And some will not be able to make this leap of faith. They won't, they won't reach the other side. They'll fall, they'll fall and get back up on the other side that they try to go across. We see this in Matthew 19, 6, when Jesus met the young ruler. Now behold, one came and said to him, good teacher, what good things shall I do that I might have eternal life? And Jesus said, why do you call me good? No one is good, but not one, but that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. And the man said to him, which ones? So Jesus says you have to keep the commandments, but listen what he says next. Jesus named all the commandments and afterwards the young man said to him, all these things that um, I have kept from my youth. So this guy had been following all the commandments from his youth, but listen to what Jesus says. And this is what the young ruler says, what should I lack? And Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go and sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and follow me. So he said, sell off your possessions because this is what this rich young ruler valued in his life. And money is something that we all value. I value money. Don't get me wrong. I value money. I save money. I'm smart with my money. But when the Lord tells me to do something with my money, I'm going to do it. But when the young man heard this, what he was saying, he went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. So he are like, we can't be perfect. Not that we can be perfect, but we can be perfect in Christ and be righteous through faith in Christ. So he had already been keeping all the commandments, but you know what Jesus said? Get rid of everything so you may gain me. And he said, and he denied him. This boy was not willing to throw away out of his earthly possessions. Jesus says that you must give up whatever you desire so that you may gain Christ. Keeping the commandments is not enough, but living in faith in Christ is all you need to have eternal life. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is. This is where your heart will be as well. All of this can only be done by the strengthening strength in the anointing of God. So, um, I feel the Holy Spirit telling me to share this story real quick. Um, I had to make a decision like this, um, not only when I got saved, but I've never actually told this story um, publicly. And um, if the Holy Spirit wasn't pulling me to tell the story, then I wouldn't because I don't want any kind of credit from man ever. Um, and there's a lot of, I'm not going to even go into that. But um, a while ago, I, I had been praying about a car and... Um, I actually had a lot of money saved up in my bank account. Um, and I was watching a video. Uh, I was watching a sermon, um, Isaiah Saldivar. And if you go watch him, he's great. And I'm not com bragging. I actually um, don't necessarily want to tell the story at all. And that's an all truth. But um, the Lord asked me to donate a large sum of money. Um, the, it was actually all the money in my bank account at the time. And it was a big deal for me. But I felt the Lord pushing me um, to make this decision. And I had been praying for a car and I was saving up for a car actually. And the thing is, is that he asked, I, I, like at first, I'm just gonna tell you, I donated like $50 because he asked me to. And then um, I still had a ton of, like I had a lot of money in my bank account for me especially. And he said, donate all of it. I said, Lord, are you crazy? And he said, yes, do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord, I trust you. And he said, then donate all of it. And I, I donated all my money. And it wasn't, it was a hard decision. But sometimes the Lord asks us to do something like this. And he's asking me to do this right now because it's a testimony. So if I can do it, any of y'all can do it. And he's, he's, this is what he said to me. He said, I've heard your prayers. Do you trust me? And I said, yes, Lord. He said, then donate all this money and I'll give you a car. I'll give you the car. And I'm still waiting on that promise. But the Lord is faithful. The Lord has never let me down. And I'm still waiting on that car. I'm still waiting on that promise. But I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And just like in Daniel 10, he said, from the very first day that I heard your prayer, like I was sent to you. And so I know my reward is sent on the way. And I know that I blessed Isaiah Saldivar's ministry and in that, and through faith, I was also, my ministry was also blessed. So we need to trust the Lord in all situations. And when he says, give up something, that we are, we are called to do that. Just like this rich young ruler. But this time, I was obedient. And so I was blessed.
So I just wanted to tell that story real quick. Um, I hope you all have a great day and uh, praise the Lord.